How's it going everybody? Data here, coming at you with a video on my custom rosters here on NHL 22 and why I think you should download these as they will help you very, very much when it comes to your creation of a realistic franchise mode. Downloading these will allow you to make further edits if you so desire. So I'm going to show you a little bit about these rosters, a lot of common sense changes, but the biggest thing is that I am making these rosters, I'm changing the salaries of the players in this roster to make teams cap compliant in franchise mode so that when you start a franchise mode save you don't have teams like the lightning or the leafs getting out of the cap trouble that they will have to get themselves out of in the real world because the computer the ai would have changed all the salary caps so follow along here as i go into the rosters i'll show you a little bit of the changes that i have made i hope everyone's having a wonderful beginning to the holiday season christmas just around the corner on this beautiful sunday afternoon slash evening here in December. So a lot of, like I said, common sense changes. These, a lot of these changes were crowdsourced. Half of these were done on live stream on Twitch as well. Just things like you have a guy who is 48% on face-offs and the guy who's 55% on face-offs. But the guy who's 48 has 83 face-offs and the guy who's 55 has 74 face-offs. Or a guy who has three body checks a night has 86 body checking and a guy who has one or two body checks a night has 93 body checking. Just simple things like that that don't make sense. I went in, I fixed it all. I can't go through every single player and make sure everything is perfect, but just what I thought would be like the big changes in the NHL so far this season. For example, on the St. Louis Blues, crazy seasons right now from a Robert Thomas. I boosted him from an 82 to an 84 and Barbashev from an 80 or an 81 to an 83 because they're having such good seasons so far. So I touched up on overalls, potentials, and even player, uh, player types as well. Looking at the Ottawa Senators, for example, Batherson and Norris were two-way forward and playmaker, respectively. Now they're playmaker and sniper, as I believe they should be. So touched up on things like that. Also touched up on things like player potential, like Brian Rust was medium top nine, but in the last couple of years, he's been almost point per game, so I made him medium top six. Just some common sense stuff like that. So I'd like to keep this video kind of one take, so I'm just going to kind of go through the teams here. I'll show you any other little common sense changes that I made along the way. Uh, like, for example, on the Vegas Golden Knights, Chandler Stevenson, even though his overall didn't go up from an 84, he's at a point per game right now, so I boosted offensive awareness, I boosted his shooting, I boosted his passing. You can't always boost the overall because maybe it's like the physical or something else is holding them back. But just to say, if, there was, if they're having a good season and I didn't feel like it was being reflected by the system here in uh, the most recent December 8th roster update, then I wanted to make sure that it was reflected. Like uh, Brent Burns from an 85, excuse me, Eric Carlson from an 85 to an 86. Uh, some other changes just off the top of my head. New Jersey Devils. I uh, even downgrades. Ty Smith from an 84 to an 83. Uh, Jesper Bratt from an 81 or an 82 to an 83 because he's doing, he's at a point per game pace right now. Goaltenders even, some changes like on the Islanders here. I downgraded Varlamov from 87 to 86 and I upgraded Sorokin from 84 to 85. Um, there's a lot of other little changes. There's at least one change per hockey team here, so you can do it. You can go and look at that a bit more closely if you'd like to make changes. If you downloaded these rosters and then were to go make changes afterwards, you could do that. There's no commission or anything that I get for you downloading these rosters. I'm just encouraging you to use them because one, I think they're realistic, which makes franchise mode more fun, and two, they're cap compliant, so teams won't be messed up. I'll show you a bit more about that in a couple of minutes. I didn't touch X factors also superstar abilities you might say okay well okay if it's minimum 20 goals i add the snipe or if it's uh, minimum 35 assists i add tape to tape what qualifies who gets an x factor who doesn't i decided just to not touch it at all the only one i did touch was to my good buddy philip dano i gave him a defensive stick here now the guy was fourth for the selkie voting he was an 84 overall i thought that was disrespectful i boosted him to an 85 better defensive stats just whatever was common sense. I'm going to say that a lot. Whatever was common sense was were things that I did. Um, Colorado Avalanche, for example, they're having really good years from Nazem Kadri, so I boosted him a bit. Uh, Devontae's, I boosted his offensive awareness a bit. He's over a point per game. JT Comfer, a little bit of an upgrade, so on and so forth. I won't go through every single one. We'll be here all day. Now, going back to the top of the list here. Here is an example of what I've done to these teams to make them cap compliant. You can follow along to what I'm doing. You can download my rosters if you're playing on PS4, 
or you can read the article that I wrote for Puckpedia, which is in the description of this video if you want to get a step-by-step -step for every team of how I fix the, the salary caps. I won't show you every single team that I did. It'll be too long. But if you want to know more about it, you can read about it in the article. So Anaheim Ducks, for example, they are a cap compliant team, but they still have Ryan Kessler on the team because there's no long term IR in NHL 22. They just make the player a 70 overall and they just live out their days. So Ryan Kessler, Brent Seabrook, Andrew Shaw, Michael Furling, guys like that, I dropped them all to free agency. So Anaheim Ducks, I dropped Ryan Kessler. Coyotes and Bruins, both cap compliant, perfect. Buffalo Sabres are actually below the salary cap now that they have traded um, Jack Eichel and then Johnny Boychuk is on the team, but he doesn't cost the $6 million that he's supposed to cost, so it's a bit odd. What do you do? What you need to do for the Buffalo Sabres is add a total of, or a minimum of, $4.25 million to the team. You can add that and distribute it across different players. I like to edit expiring deals. So Victor Olofsson, I boosted him up from 3.05 million to 7.3 million. It's only gonna be like that for that one season. After that one season, you can re-sign him. He'll get paid whatever he's gonna get paid. It's just make the team compliant for that one season instead of Jeff Skinner now for the next six years will cost you 9.3 million. For example, if I didn't give that extra money to Victor Olafson, so uh, that's the Buffalo Sabers there who are under the salary cap. Hurricane uh, Flames, and then onto the Hurricanes. Uh, I had to add money to Ian. Sorry, reduce Ian Cole. He gets brought down to league minimum from the 2.9 million he was making to 750k to keep that team from getting altered. Hawks, you drop Andrew Shaw. Avalanche are good. Blue Jackets are good. Dallas Stars, you drop Ben Bishop to free agency. But because Ben Bishop's like an 85 overall, what I did was I reduced his overall in the edit player screen, and then I dropped him to free agency instead of dropping him to free agency and someone signs him right away since he's an 85 overall. Then, for example, you might have a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs who are in a tough situation because there's a salary cap this year and there's a salary cap in the future because they have extensions going out like the one to Morgan Riley. So what you have to do for the Toronto Maple Leafs, for example, is reduce the salary, not the extension, just the salary of this one season for Morgan Riley from 5 million to 2 million. Then you need to go to David Kampf and you need to reduce his salary. Where is he at? He's pretty down here, right? He's getting paid 1.9 million, is that it? No, 1.5, he's getting, so reduce him from 1.5 to one. That makes the Leafs cap compliant for this season. And because because Comp has an, a contract that transfers over to next season as well, that helps them be cap compliant for 2022-23 with the Riley extension coming in. Gets a bit complicated. It's the same idea for the Lightning. You need to reduce the salary, not the extension of Braden Point. So with all that understood, I'm going to show you now a franchise mode that does not have my salaries just to show you how wonky some of the salaries can get when you leave it up to the AI to adjust the salary cap. So if I go to my active roster and I choose the December 8th roster update from EA and then go start a franchise mode, turning everything off and making sure that the salary cap stays on, you'll see that teams are very much affected by these changes. So let's go to the Toronto Maple Leafs, for example. It says, oh, look at that. They're like 1.7 million under the cap. That's cool. But Austin Matthews is supposed to be getting paid 11.64. Now he's getting paid 11.33 for the next three years. Marner is supposed to get paid 10.3, now 10.6. Tavares is supposed to get paid 11, now 10.7. So everyone gets changed pretty much, all the big guys, by 300K. And then you go and look at Morgan Riley and his $7.5 million extension. Now, he, yes, you keep the $7.5 million, but that's only because everyone else is getting paid less. So not really ideal. Then look at a team like Vegas, for example, that has huge trouble. Now with Jack Eichel coming into the team, his $10 million is now 9.265. Over 700K shaved off that contract. Petrangelo from 8.8 .8 to 8.14. Stone from 9.2. 5 to 8.795 so I, I'm not a fan of this I don't want to have teams getting like getting cut a break meanwhile I have to sign my players to big contracts but these guys are signed for five six years at really cheap well, not really cheap but almost a million dollars off Eichel like 700k off that's a lot that you know over five seasons that helps out a lot so for Vegas for example you'd look at players who have expiring contracts 
And then since those are the ones that affect the simulation and the future the least, you change those contracts. So one year left on Riley Smith at 4.595, reduce Riley Smith to league minimum, reduce Brady, uh, Brayden McNabb to league minimum, reduce Matthias Janmark to league minimum, all these guys. And then the guys with two, three, four years left, still you get to play with them or see them in the league and you as the general manager can navigate that or you can see how the AI general manager navigates that. So now going back, exiting out of here, you can go to rosters, roster sharing, click on download community files. If you're on PlayStation 4, of course, unfortunately PS5, Xbox, all the different ones, there's like four different worlds that we have to navigate. You'll click square to search. You'll type in data, D-A-T-A, -A, and you'll find data YouTube roster. You can't put datas, you can't put an apostrophe S, you can't put data 782. It took me a lot of times trying to figure this out. Description here, realistic edits and player salary adjustments so that all teams are cap compliant and will not get changed in franchise mode. So I, only, I already downloaded this, obviously, being the creator of it. I would go to my rosters, click on active roster now, and make sure that I move off of that downloaded roster and go choose data YouTube roster and then go and start up another franchise mode, making sure once again that salary cap stays on. And even though all teams are compliant, it'll still tell you, are you sure you want the salary cap on? The system will now fix some teams that, don't worry about that. I'm pretty sure every team could be at the salary cap floor and it'll still tell you that. So just keep salary cap on and continue. Now I'll once again go back to the trade screen here. Let's go back to Vegas, for example, since we were looking at them. Now they're still very tight in the salary cap, but at least it is much more realistic to what they're actually dealing with. Eichel, Stone, Petrangelo, they're all getting paid what they're supposed to get paid, but the only edit is that, like I said, on league minimum, you have Smith, Yanmark, and McNabb just for this one season, and that's the price you pay so that everyone can stay uh, according to their, the big boys can stay according to their normal contracts. Same over on the Toronto Maple Leafs. You have uh, Riley on 2 million, but everyone else is going to get paid what they're supposed to get paid. And you can even go over, there's a lot of other teams that are getting affected. The Barkov extension on, um, on uh, the Panthers would be affected. Buffalo, now you have Jeff Skinner back to making, even though we have all of a sudden 7.3, you have Skinner back at 9 million. They're just at the cap floor, they're at 62.287. So there you have it, my friends. You move out guys like Shea Weber, unfortunately, Ben Bishop. You play around with the salary a little bit, and that is what you get. And it takes a little bit of work. Luckily, if you're on PS4, it's going to be no work for you. And you can download my rosters. You disagree with something on the rosters? Fantastic. Download my rosters, and then go and edit those rosters. Again, there's no commission for you downloading them. I'm not gaining anything by this. I'm just hoping to help you in your experience of franchise mode. Make it more realistic. Make it more fun. And hey, speaking of franchise mode, if you like watching it and contributing to it, we need some assistant general managers. We have some job openings in our Seattle Kraken NHL 22 franchise mode, as well as our NHL 07 Atlanta Thrashers Dynasty mode on the PlayStation 2. A lot of other series going on here on the channel and over on the Twitch page. The link for that is in the description, as well as the link for the Discord server we, where we love talking about all of our own franchise mode accomplishments, sports, and much more. So if you're brand new to the channel, we would love to have you join our community. It's a really fun one, I do have to say, and it will be just that much better with you in it so please do consider subscribing and leave a like if these rosters were helpful to you remember to check out that article at, at puckpedia link in the description to read more on those roster changes the article will be updated as different roster uh, updates are put out by ea and i'll update the roster sharing as well so again to be made apprised of all those updates it'll be good to be in the discord server so i hope that was all helpful let me know your thoughts on these rosters if you have any i would love to be of any service down in the comments and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.